Hey everybody, my name is Matt with War in the Rockies. Uh, behind me you can see here a bunch of National Park Service brochures. These are what you get when you visit a national park. Here uh, is the Grand Canyon brochure. The Grand Canyon is so big that they actually give you two additional brochures, the North Rim Guide and the South Rim Guide. It's almost like two different parks in a way. Uh, now typically these brochures you cannot get on the website. You can't get a digital version of them on the website usually. Uh, but um, with the Grand Canyon, these two, you can download these digital brochures to help you prepare for your trip. I'll put a link in the description. Well, I've done a few of these videos where I use the map along with the photos and images that I have to kind of help give you an introduction or a guide to the park. People seem to like it. So in this video, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you around the Grand Canyon. Consider this your beginner's guide for Grand Canyon National Park. On this map here, it shows you where the Grand Canyon is, which is in northern Arizona. So up here is Utah, over here is Nevada, down here is Arizona. And the Grand Canyon really kind of starts right here at about Page, Arizona. And that's because the Glen Canyon Dam is there which forms Lake Powell and this whole Glen Canyon recreation area. And the Colorado River runs down through here. It's what forms the Grand Canyon and then comes all the way out here to, and it runs into the Hoover Dam right there near Boulder City and forms Lake Mead and then continues to flow out that way. So the Colorado River is the big river here that feeds the, is the lifeline for the West really. For that reason, there's there are a couple of dams there. So let's take a look. There are four sections of the Grand Canyon there's the north, south, east, and west. So the north rim here is part of the national park, and so is the south rim here, which is called the Grand Canyon Village. You'll see the national park is, is uh, in pink here. It goes around like this. That's all the national park area. I'm going to cover the north rim in another video. It's only visited by about 10% of the visitors that go to the Grand Canyon. It is beautiful. It's well worth your time. But, and, and you're going to escape the crowds there, but I'll cover that in another video. This video, I'm going to focus on the South Rim at the Grand Canyon Village, but I did want to touch really quick on two other areas that you've probably heard about. This over here is called the Grand Canyon East area. Over here is the famous Antelope Canyon, which is a slot canyon. This is on the Navajo Indian Reservation. You need reservations to get to it. You have to book a tour. Also over there is Horseshoe Bend, which is a really popular viewpoint of the Grand Canyon and the Colorado River. Also Navajo Bridge, which is a bridge that you can look down into the canyon and see the Colorado River. And then Lee's Ferry, which is a place where you can actually drive down to the river. One of the very few places you can drive down to the river. This was an old ferry back in the 1800s to help people. The only way really to get across the Colorado River for hundreds of miles in either direction. So you can actually go down there and swim around a little bit. Okay, and then over here is Grand Canyon West. This has the famous skywalk that you've probably heard about where you can walk out on this bridge and look down through the glass to see the Grand Canyon below you. This is on the Wallapai Indian Reservation and it costs quite a bit of money to go do that. That's about two and a half hours away from Las Vegas. It's about five hours away from the south rim of the Grand Canyon. And then you probably heard of Havasu Falls. This is on the Havasupai Indian Reservation. You actually need to put in for a lottery to go there. It's a multiple day hiking trip to see that. The focus of this video is to help you understand the south rim of the Grand Canyon, which is where most people visit when they visit the Grand Canyon. There are a couple of cities kind of nearby. There's Williams, Arizona and Flagstaff, Arizona. Both of these kind of build themselves as the gateway to the Grand Canyon. Uh, Williams is about an hour away. Flagstaff, a little longer. And so those are common places to stay if you're visiting the Grand Canyon. As you can see, there's other national monuments around there. A lot to do in that area, Flagstaff area. But for now, let's zoom in on the Grand Canyon Village. Okay, so this is an overview map of the whole South Rim, which is quite large. So if we zoom in a little bit here, this whole area is called the Hermit's Rest area. During the busy season from March to the end of November, you have to take a shuttle on this road here or you can ride a bike, but you can't drive your vehicle on the road during the busy season. Uh, as you can see, there's different viewpoints, and at the end is a cute little building designed by Mary Jane Coulter called Hermit's Rest. It's a little gift shop, a little restaurant, a little, um, you can get some food there and some snacks and stuff. And then there's also a Hermit Trailhead here, which you can hike down into the canyon. This is 
not a real common trailhead partly because there's no water on the trail but we'll cover hiking in the Grand Canyon in another video let's zoom out here and show you the section on the east side so this is called the desert view area here so this is a big road over 20 miles that you drive out to the end and at the end there's this desert view tower another cute little building designed by mary jane coulter you can walk up to the top to the watchtower and look out over the colorado river this provides some of the best views of the colorado river there's also another stop on that uh, road called tusian museum and ruin that uh, was closed when we were last there but this is actually some ruins that are ancestral pueblo and ruins there's also a museum there so this road's popular road you can only drive that road there's no shuttle going out on that road and then before we zoom in closer on this center part here the village i just want to show you that there is on this desert view road there's a section here to yaki point and the south kaibab trailhead you can only take a shuttle to these two points in the south kaibab trailhead this is a real popular trail to hike at the grand canyon and Yaki Point's a pretty popular viewpoint, especially at sunset or sunrise. Now let's zoom in on the village a little bit. So the village is the third section, the main section here at the south rim of the Grand Canyon. It really is part of your trip to visit the village. It's got some really nice buildings there, and it's just kind of got a charm to it. Here at the village, you have over here the Grand Canyon Visitor Center. And then I want you to notice that there are colored routes here. These are the shuttle routes that you can take. So I kind of overlooked this, but there's the city of Tusian, which is only a few miles south of the Grand Canyon. So that's another place that you could stay if you wanted to. And there's actually a purple shuttle, a purple shuttle line that goes from Tusian into the Grand Canyon. So you can stay there and take the shuttle into the Grand Canyon if you want. It'll take you to the Visitor Center here. So at the visitor center, uh, you can walk right out here to Mather Point. This is really, the, for most people, the first viewpoint they're gonna get of the Grand Canyon. It's a famous viewpoint named after Stephen Mather, who was the, one of the first directors of the Park Service. I think the first director, actually. Really helped build up the National Park Service. A beautiful viewpoint. There's a reason why it's the most popular viewpoint. It's a great one. So you can walk along the rim here. Okay, I call this the Rim Trail, so you can do that here in this uh, area. Uh, there's the Yavapai Point and Geology Museum there. Uh, as we go over here to this section here, this is the Market Plaza. Um, probably not a big part of your trip there unless you're staying at Mather Campground or Yavapai, Yavapai Lodge or unless you need groceries at the market there in town. And then over here is the village. Now this is the part you really want to make sure you visit when you go. A bunch of cool buildings in this area. So there's a visitor center there called Vercamps Visitor Center. There is a place called the Hopi House, which is another building that Mary Jane Coulter designed. It's a gift shop. A building called El Tovar Hotel. This, this is the most famous lodge, I think, of the Grand Canyon. Built in about 1904, 1905. Really cool, right there on the rim. Real popular to eat dinner there at night. You need reservations. It's kind of expensive. We opted to eat breakfast there because we didn't need the reservations and because it was less expensive. Then there's a building called Lookout Studio that was built by Fred Harvey. This is just a lookout building with a little gift shop there as well. Another one called Bright Angel Lodge, which inside of it is Fred Harvey Burger. So Fred Harvey kind of owned the concessions for quite a while in the, uh, the Grand Canyon. His company has now become Zantera, which owns the concessions there. But anyway, Bright Angel Lodge, another place that you can stay and you can eat lunch there. The Kolb Studio was formed by a couple of brothers named the Kolb Brothers, and they were early photographers of the Grand Canyon and promoted it and all that. Kind of had some battles there with Fred Harvey for um, ownership of some of the tourism industry there at the Grand Canyon. And then uh, another lodge over here called Maswick Lodge. So lots of places that you can stay there at this in the village at the Grand Canyon, which would be a good idea uh, because it is a really nice little village. There's a train depot there. That's where the train comes from Williams, Arizona. So the, the train used to be the only way you could get to the Grand Canyon, of course, before the automobile. And then once the automobile came along, uh, the train kind of fell out of favor, but it was resurrected, I think, in the 1980s. Now it just goes from Williams, Arizona to the train depot there. So a lot of people will stay in Williams, they'll take the train up, they'll see the village for a day, hop back on the train, and go back in the evening kind of a nostalgic thing to do there. And then there is the mule barn right here. So this is where they keep the mules. They The mules then go on this Bright Angel trailhead right there, and they go down to the bottom of the 
the Grand Canyon. You can also hike that Bright Angel Trailhead. So both mules and hikers on that trail. That's the other real popular trail at the Grand Canyon. So I mentioned the South Kaibab Trail that you have to take the shuttle to get to. And then there's the Bright Angel Trailhead. They'll also have the mules kind of stored in a pen right there at the top of the trailhead as they're getting ready to go or as they come back from their, their venture down into the canyon. Okay, now I hope that's helped answer some questions for you and given you a little introduction there. So we are doing many videos on the Grand Canyon, including a longer trip planner that's going to go over a lot of details kind of all in one place for you to help you give you a really nice guide to plan your trip. Also, we are creating an itinerary and an audio guide, which will be on our website. These are things that you can download for your trip to really help you get the most out of your vacation to the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon has so many stories, really cool stories, drama, airplane crashes, deaths, donkeys, famous donkeys. Uh, it's got a lot of really interesting stories. So we are including all these in the audio guide for you here, as well as, again, as well as a, a real step-by-step -step good game plan for visiting the Grand Canyon. So you can check that out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.